large bowel obstruction is an important and common cause of acute abdominal pain. And therefore, it's really important that we're able to assess these patients clinically and use appropriate imaging to make our diagnosis. Abdominal x-rays are the most commonly used imaging investigation to make the diagnosis of large bowel obstruction. And therefore, it's really vital that we're able to assess abdominal x-rays and competently and confidently make a diagnosis of large bowel obstruction. And at the end of this video tutorial, that's exactly what you'll be able to do. Here, you can see a normal abdominal x-ray. And next to it, we can see an abdominal x-ray that shows large bowel dilatation in keeping with the presence of a large bowel obstruction. And I'm sure you'll agree it's pretty clear to see that there's an obvious difference between the two. Looking more closely, in the abdominal x-rays of large bowel obstruction, the features we'd normally expect to see are peripherally located dilated large bowel loops with a diameter of more than 9 cm for the cecum and more than 6 cm for the other parts of the large bowel. We can tell that these dilated loops are in fact large bowel rather than small bowel due to the presence of horstra. Horstra are saccular folds of mucosa within the large bowel, which give the large bowel its characteristic segmented or pouch-like appearance. And you can see the horstra highlighted here. These are different from the valvuli conaventus that we see in small bowel, which are fully circumferential folds of mucosa that we're able to see as lines that span the full width of the lumen of the small bowel on abdominal x-ray. Whereas with horstra, these lines only partially span the width of the lumen. If you enjoyed watching this video, then make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great free content. Or, if you want to make sure you know what you need to know for med school, then subscribe to surgicalteaching.com for more great videos, learning forums, and MCQs.